let's go and talk about how does the radical change our solution. Notice in this example, I have the radical over our whole expression on the right hand side. Here, I have a two on the outside. And here, I have a four on the outside. How is where our radical is placed impact our steps that we're gonna to use to solve the equation, as well as what exactly our solution is going to look like. So again, we're trying to solve for x, we're gonna get the x isolated. So we're gonna use our inverse operations. Now, on the first example, when we're using your inverse operations, you can't do anything under the radical until that radical is gone. So how do we undo taking the square root? Well, in that case, what we're gonna do is square. Now by squaring both sides, I'm gonna be left with a one equals a two x minus four. Now our life just got way easier, right? Because the inverse operation of the square root is going to be squaring, the cube root would be cubing, fourth root would be raising to the fourth power. And now you can see we just have a two-step equation, right? So now I can just undo my inverse operations using the reverse order of operations, right? We add a four first on both sides, and then I divide by two on both sides. So I get a five halves is equal to x, and we can flip that around if we wanna go ahead and write it that way. So x equals a five halves. Now let's look at this one. Now remember, the first step over here was to go ahead and square both sides because we wanna get rid of the radical. That is going to be our step once we have our radical isolated. See, in this case, we have the two on the outside. We don't want the two on the outside. So what we need to do is we need to undo that two by dividing by two, right? Because that's technically a two times the square root. So therefore, I'm gonna divide a two on both sides. I now have a one half is equal to a square root of an x minus four. In this case, what we're gonna do here is now we can just go back to the step. We have our square root isolated. So now we're going to square both sides. That's gonna leave me with a one fourth is equal to an x minus four. Now, it's not a two step equation, it's just a one step equation. So I'll add a four to both sides and then to do a little fraction review, Remember, you can rewrite a four. Four is the same thing as a 16 over four because four divides in 16 four times. Now, why would I wanna write it that way? The reason why I wanna write a four as 16 over four is because it has the same denominator as my fraction. Now, I know I can add these two fractions, right? Since they have the same denominator, I can add the numerators. So therefore, x is gonna equal a 17 over four. Definitely not the same solution as we had over here. Now over here, it's the exact same idea and process that we did over here, right? Over here, we wanted to get rid of the multiplication by two, so we divided by two. Here, we wanna undo the subtraction of four, so therefore, we're gonna add a four to both sides. So five is equal to the square root of two x. Now, we can isolate that, or I'm sorry, undo the squaring, so we're gonna take the square root. So 25 is equal to a two x, my apologies, and now we can use our inverse operations, divided by two. So x is gonna equal a 25 over two. Now, the one question you might be asking yourself is, well, what about if you have a two and a four on the outside? What would that equation look like? That will come up in the next video.